Good afternoon, my friends. Tuesday afternoon, beautiful day. I've talked with some of my kids today. Really had fun doing that. I enjoy them so much. Now it's time for a video. This is a very serious video. People have said to me, why should I trust God? What has he ever done for me? Another um, statement that a person made, this one's really, well, you can judge for yourself. This person said, I love to sin, man. Hey, look, you do your thing, I'll do mine. I love to sin, I'm having a great time. Hmm. Let's see what the Lord has to say about that. We'll have prayer first, and then we'll talk about these two things. Father God, teach us again the things we need to know, Lord, and let the Bible be our answer. Let the Bible be the, 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 the go-to place to find the answers to these really difficult questions and statements that people make. We trust you, Lord, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. What do you say to somebody who says, uh, you know, why, why should I trust God? What's he ever done for me? I'm reminded of the scripture that comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. As it is written, the eye has not seen, nor the ear heard, nor has entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have accepted God's plan of salvation. He's going to open up the doors of heaven to you. What's he ever done for me? Think of John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled, Jesus said. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. The other statement, this one is just unbelievable. I love to sin, Brother L. I'm having a great time. I mean, you've got your thing, you do your thing, I've got my thing, I'll do my thing. I'm having a wonderful time. And again, Scripture comes to my mind. I'm reminded of Romans 6, 23. Three parts to it. Three parts to this verse of Scripture. And it's dramatic. The first part answers his question in part. The wages of sin is death. Well, who would want to choose death? as a way to spend eternity. No one. No one. If they had the opportunity, which this person does have the opportunity to change his mind and get right with God. But let's go on. First part, the wages of sin is death. The second part, but the gift of God, this is a gift now. You're not paying for it. Can't steal it. It's a gift from God is eternal life. You can spend eternity with God in his, in his home. In a home that is preparing for billions of people. What, the third part answers the question, what do I have to do to get this, Brother Al? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I'll say, say the whole thing. The wage, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. How? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Why? Should I want God? Why should I make a confession of faith? What's he ever done for me? Hmm. I'm having fun sinning. What does that mean? These two scriptures. 1 Corinthians 2.9, Romans 
answer that question. Please read them today. Read those two scriptures. It's, it's a wake-up call. I'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing. Bye-bye.